We come to this house of worship to celebrate together the marriage of Gerald and Tanya. We take ourselves out of the unusual routines of daily life to witness a unique moment in the lives of Gerald and Tanya. Today, they join their lives in the union of marriage. But before we continue, let's take a moment to pray. Would you please be so kind to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be present. We believe this with all our hearts. May this wedding service be highlighted with a deep sense of your abiding presence. Bring honor and glory to your name and bless this occasion. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. A marriage, as we understand it, it is a voluntary act. It is a full commitment. It is a declaration of vows to one another. It is a confirmation that is indeed, that indeed is saying, I want to be married to you today. You have both come here freely, without reservation, to give yourselves to one another in marriage. You know, when we started our conversations about the wedding, uh, during the course of our phone conversations that we had, you know, I asked you both what attracted you to each other. I asked you how you met, where you met, and, and of course you shared. But one thing that, that struck me the most was this. We see each other as friends, as spouses. We see each other as friends. Truly, I mean, honest friends. And it all started, remember the time when he was fooling a Wells Fargo in the bank? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was the manager at that time. Now he's our CEO. <laughs> 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 but you know, Jerry, you shared with me, um, uh, you're very open. You said, you know, um, what attracted me to Tanya was the fact that she, um, 
she was herself, she was positive. She loved, uh, she was, uh, to her smile, and not to mention her beauty, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I said, that's great, that's great. You know, and um, so it was, it was, uh, uh, it started with a look, it started with a uh, hello, it started with a uh, casual acquaintance. Um, and this, this evolved, evolved into a friendship, and then from a friendship, it evolved into a relationship. Um, but I would like to add the following, since what you shared with me on that day. That we come, we have come together not to mark the start of a relationship, but to acknowledge and strengthen a bond that already exists. Would you agree with me? There's something very strong, very solid already. This is the one. Amen. <clears throat> so this ceremony today is a public affirmation of this bond. Continue finding and bringing and bringing out the best in each other. You know, marriage offers opportunities, many opportunities for sharing and growth that no other human relationship can equal or offer. Remember that in every marriage, there are good times and bad times. Trials will come. Your marriage will be tested. The same way as believers, our faith and obedience to Christ is tested. There will be times of joy and times of sorrow. But you have what it takes for you. You have to be there. Marriage is a journey. If you were to ask today the couples that are here, for those of us that have been married 20, 30, 40 years, are you there yet? No, <laughs> we're not there yet. You know, I don't think any couple can tell you, hey, Pastor, we have, or hey, Gerald, hey, Tanya, we have arrived. I could not say that. I could not say we have arrived. But it's nonetheless, you enjoy the journey together. Let me share with you three uh, principles that I think will help you in this journey. Or as you begin this journey. Number one, be constantly grateful for this precious person who has you have chosen to make a life with. Gerald, be grateful. It's time to say, Lord, thank you for bringing this person into my life. Likewise, time to be grateful the Lord has brought this man, Gerald, into your life. Don't you say it? Number two, be generous with compliments. Be stingy with your criticism, but very, very lavish with your praise. Yeah. Well, I don't know, I can't find anything good about this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's there. It's there, you know. Uh, God's grace and love, you know, it's, it's there. But this also includes being attentive, uh, being helpful. Uh, you know, the world can be a tough place. You know that, right? The world can be a tough place. Amen, church? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we live in a world that, uh, that is not very Christian marriage friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, but make your marriage and your home, I would amount you, make your, your, your marriage and your home a, a place of refuge. 
you know, at the end of the day, Daryl, when you come home, Anna, when you come home, boy, I'll take that home. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and embrace that moment. Embrace that place. So, paying compliments, not just for the things that he does or she does, but for who they are. Number three, make the Lord Jesus the unfading rock in your lives together. Commit yourselves to him as you have expressed your faith. We had this conversation also. Um, but I just would like to reiterate that continue to grow in your faith. Continue to grow in your life. You know, King David said, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will grant you the desires of your heart. It's not beautiful. Delight yourselves in the Lord, and he will grant you the desires of your heart. All right, so are we ready? <laughs> All right. I would like to say, say to our family and friends that uh, Daryl and Tanya have decided to write their own vows. My fact, you only get this book out of my Gerald, I'm going to ask you to be spontaneous. Okay? You may go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I, Gerald, stand before you today as the luckiest man on earth, ready to take you, Tanya, the literal girl of my dreams, to be my wife. When we first met over 18 years ago, when I was hired at the same old Fargo branch as you, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that we'd be standing here today. On my first day of work, my conversation was headed right next to yours, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, she looks just like Paula Abdul. <laughs>
Well, is it cooking? <laughs> next to your name on my phone 
which stems from the following quote, friends come and go like the waves of the ocean, but the true ones stay like an octopus on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for staying all these years. And now here we are standing before God and our loved ones, making the choice to love each other for the rest of our earthly lives. As we all know, love is not a feeling, it's an action word. And because it's an action, I vow to love you unconditionally, to listen, to understand, to support and uplift you with my words, to be the sounding board of wisdom and encouragement. I vow to admit my wrongs at least once a year. <laughs> I commit to my own well-being by focusing consistently on my mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health, because in doing so, I'm committing to the health of our marriage. I vow to laugh with you and not at you. <laughs> I vow to forgive often, even when it's challenging, by extending compassion and grace towards you. But most importantly, I vow to keep God at the center of our marriage. It's because of him that we are able to love, breathe, and it's because of him that I'm made whole and able to stand here today and declare my love and offer my heart to you. Not only am I grateful to God, but I wanna thank you for loving me the way you do and for being who you are. You are so patient, even in the most challenging times, so caring, kind-hearted, thoughtful, thoughtful and gener generous, and have this sense of humor that can bring so much joy to my life. You intentionally take care of me in ways I've never known. It's the little things from taking out my trash when you visit, <coughs> you open my door, carry my luggage up 2,000 steps like the time in Pussy Fennel, <laughs> opening up the cap to my water bottle, the Just Because flowers, offering to help my sister, niece's nephew, and just the list goes on. You care for my heart as if it were the most sacred and fragile thing that existed on this earth. You support me in the work I do so much that you consider it your calling to be there for me as I dedicate my life to help others. What can I say? You're literally God sent. I prayed for you and at times I cried out to God. that I would have a person like you as a companion for life. I didn't think it was God's plan for me. I wondered if it was if I was forgotten or overlooked. But as Matthew 6, 26 reminds us, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap, nor stir away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? He cares so much for our hearts, and he knows what we need. Our love story is a testament of hope, of trust in a God we don't see. You are my answered prayer. How blessed are we that our love story became as best friends and now soulmates. May we continue to nourish this God-given love for the rest of our days. I love you today, tomorrow, forever. Having this love in your hearts, you have chosen to seal your vows by exchanging rings. Antonio, would you please uh, bring the rings? Thank you. From the earliest times, the circle has been a sign of completeness. The, the rings that you have chosen to wear have neither beginning nor end. 
much like you love for one another. They are symbols, they are symbols of the words that you speak today. As you wear these rings, may, may they be a, a constant reminder of these God promises you are making today. Gerald, take this ring and place it on Tanya's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring, give you this ring as, a love, as a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. Tanya, take this ring and place it on Gerald's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. And faithfulness to you. Gerald and Tanya, from this moment forward, you will never, never be alone. You will carry with you the love of one another, of another person, giving you completeness, completeness to you and life. Now we are going to witness oh, the, the three chord strand ceremony and communion. For those of you that may not be familiar with the uh, three strands ceremony, allow me to explain. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly or easily broken. This passage I have read illustrates the importance of Christian companionship to Christians that are bound together in Christ are stronger than the individuals themselves. We believe that Christian marriage is about more than the union of one man and one woman. The Bible teaches us that God performs a miracle in our marriage, uniting us together in a covenant relationship with him as one. The cord of three strands symbolizes the journey of one man and one woman by God into a marriage relationship. That is to say, it takes three to make it. You, your spouse, and God. It was God who taught us how to love by keeping him at the center of your marriage as you have both expressed. His love will continue to bind you together as one throughout your lives and your marriage. Communion. What is communion? As the word implies, communion implies having fellowship with God, but it also reminds us of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Jesus told his disciples the night before he was crucified, as they partook of the bread and the wine, he said to do this in remembrance of him. The bread symbolizes his body that was slain for our sins, the wine symbolizes his blood shed for us on Calvary. Calvary. We're going to go ahead and participate of the communion first.
As I pray for them, I would like you that in your mind, your hearts, you also reach out to them as well. Uh, wish them the best. Wish them many blessings. Amen. Father, we come before your presence, and as your serv servants, I unite this couple in holy matrimony. I pray for love, I pray for healing, I pray for health, I pray for abundance of joy, I pray for, for prosperity. Lord Jesus, may your love and your blessings be upon them from this day forth. We thank you, we bless you, and thank you for making this moment possible. Thank you, Jesus, and we also thank you on behalf of the families that are here, friends and loved ones, who are extending out their love to you, to Gerald and Tanya. In Jesus' name, I bless this marriage. Amen. Amen. Now for the moment. You've all been waiting for. Gerald, you may now kiss the brush. As a minister of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the authority vested in me by the state, I now pronounce Gerald and Tanya husband and wife. And what the Lord has joined together, what the Lord has joined together today, let no man set asunder. Porque Dios unió, no lo separe el hombre.
behalf of the Bruce family and the Rice family, you are uh, kindly invited to um, to the um, the reception. <laughs> Trying to think of the name of the hotel. Caliente Tropics. Caliente Tropics Hotel. I'm sorry. All right. So um, when you go there, you will be uh, served as snacks and drinks, and the reception will begin. Uh, promptly at 6 p.m. Okay. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I would be nervous. <laughs> 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 no, no, I think.